Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Yahua, I'm a second year PhD candidate at the University of Melbourne. Saying hi to you from the quarantine hotel. Hopefully when you're watching this video, I'm already out of this place. Since I don't have much to do during the quarantine, so I spent some time looking back on my experience of doing a PhD in Australia this year. In this video, I'll chat about the difficulties that I met with, and I'll also share three tips that I personally found really helpful. If you are an overseas student or if you want to study abroad or to do a PhD, I hope you can learn some useful stuff from this video. Without further ado, let's get started. So let's take a quick look at what I did this year and how I felt. See if I can conclude all these things in one breath. First, I got my ethics approval and then I start collecting data and take down some research notes. And then I presented at three conferences and I also did lots of teaching and gave two guest lectures. And then I also an RA and then I also in a student run journal um, as an editor. Whew. That was intense. Like I said before, the most difficult part of doing a PhD is time management. Apparently, you need to deal with a lot of things if you take academia seriously. And there is no such thing as balance. You need to accept the fact that you are being traced by deadlines most of the time. This year, I also found another difficulty that is managing stress. First, some part of the pressure is actually coming from the research itself. So I love my research topics and I love doing everything about my research and I have lots of fun, but I also felt that everything was a mess. Like I didn't know how to sort things out properly and then I didn't know when would be the end point. And I also have this guilt in my mind Maybe I'm not doing enough, but then what it means by enough? I guess maybe it's common for second year PhD students trying to get their heads around the research topics. Apart from research, another part of the pressure is coming from teaching. Teaching means a lot to me and I also learn a lot from teaching, especially from my students when they are talking about something, what's trendy among Gen Z. But the problem is, since I signed a contract with the school as an employee, a part of me also saying that, oh my God, I should take things seriously. That's why at the beginning, I spent a lot of time on teaching and kind of neglecting my PhD, which is supposed to be the other way around. In general, all these work opportunities were fantastic because they gave me an idea of what life would be like if you are in academia. But then when I was so stressed out from all these responsibilities, I was like, can I run away from all this? If I'm not doing a PhD or involved in any kind of academic work, all the stress would be gone. But running away is not a solution for me because all the challenges are what make me who I am today and who I will become in the future. So let's turn to the three main takeaways that I've personally found really helpful that have been helping me, keeping me stay sane among the BC PhD life while studying abroad. First, Checking academia as a kind of lifestyle. I heard about this when I was networking with some senior scholars and then it was like an aha moment when I heard about this. I didn't understand why some of my professors can sit in their room the whole day working on their research or project or books and then just repeat this kind of routine every single day. I think it's not because they are self-disciplined or smart. Well, they probably are self-disciplined and smart, but I think it's mainly because they have the passion on doing what they're doing. If you treat academia as a lifestyle, then your passion will drive you to do things, which means that you do what you do is because you like them rather than it's about money or status or KPI in general. I'm still processing this idea of treating academia as a lifestyle and thinking how realistic it would be, but this idea is definitely mind-blowing. The second takeaway is about learning to relax and prioritize health. I realized that I didn't know how to relax when I got COVID. Yes, I did get it from my friend a couple months ago. Anyway, when I got COVID, although my symptoms were not too bad, I was supposed to get plenty of rest, but my mind was still thinking about work, work, work. I didn't even ask for a sick leave. I just switched to online classes and trying to put myself together by eating a lot of strepsils and Panadol. But now when I'm looking back, I should have taken a break. When you're healthy, you should work hard, but when you're supposed to rest, you should do so. 
No matter how busy you are, please always make sure that you can take a day off to chill. Or you can get things done intensively within a short period of time. Then afterwards, taking time off for yourself to enjoy life and prioritize your physical and mental health. That's why this year, I also squeezed time to travel a few times in the midst of the crazy workload. During the time you're supposed to rest, just let go of work, put away your phone, and live in the moment. But don't forget to bring your credit card because sometimes shopping could be a way of relief too. When going around different places, CCB's MasterCard credit card is always a good friend to bring along. Not only because it's convenient and safe, but it also has various special offers that are designed for overseas students. If you're in Australia, through CCB's MasterCard, you can get cash back when shopping at malls or a chemist warehouse. Whether you want to visit a zoo, aquarium, or a Lego shop, there's cash back too. If learning new skills is your thing, you will enjoy 25% off when doing online classes in business computer science, and creative arts, etc. MasterCard also has collaborations with Pan Pacific Hotel Groups, where you can even enjoy the free night of staying in the hotel room. How fabulous it is! To register a new card, check out their WeChat official account by clicking the button down below, then you'll see the red button for applying a new card. You can find the detailed information for all their special offers through their mini program. Making plans through CCB's MasterCard credit card, then things would be money-saving and less stressful. Stressful. All right, last takeaway is about embracing ignorance. The more I learn, the deeper that I dig in, the more I find myself not know about. Especially in an area like communication and media studies, they have lots of overlaps with other fields like sociology, anthropology, cultural studies, like arts in general. On the one hand, it means that I should stay humble and always have a curious mind to explore knowledge. But on the other hand, I also feel that I don't need to know everything. Just need to spot the research gap and see how I can contribute to the existing knowledge. Okay, that's basically it. Treating academia as a lifestyle, learning to relax, and embracing the ignorance. These three points sound easy, but it's actually difficult to do. I hope today's video is helpful for anyone who is about to do a PhD, study abroad, or currently doing a degree and studying overseas. My plan for this summer, while it's winter now, is to fully devote myself in doing research while having a lot of good Chinese food. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Happy New Year and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!